Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my scrunchies uh, for my lovely, wonderful short hair that can't wear them. But I do have plenty of friends that use them. Uh, you can use pretty much any style of yarn or si in size that you want. It just depends on how many, um, you know, how many increases you do for each stitch. And if you have a huge variation in your yarn, Excuse me, that will affect your, your, the hook you use. I generally use a 5 millimeter hook, although occasionally, depending on the yarn, if it's small enough, I will switch down to a 4.5 millimeter hook. This is yarn that, this yarn that I used. I did the basic, you know, it's a 1, 2, 3 pattern. The first row is single crochet, the second row is two double crochet, or two half doubles, and the third row is three doubles. Now, this one, because the yarn is quite a bit thicker, I did a uh, single double double. So one row of single crochets, a row, then the row of two half doubles, and a row of two double crochets. I'll explain that a little bit more in depth as we get going. So, uh, what you want, you know, you want a, you, obviously, you know, you need the, the ponytail holder, the ones without the metal bands are best. And if you know how to do a magic ring, then you've got the, um, the first part is that's how you get started on it. It's, it real, it's similar to doing the magic ring. Now, I'm trying to make sure that you start off with a slip knot, and I need to trim this because my yarn is coming apart. It's un unwinding itself. Now, when you do a slip knot, is I will just, you know, loop the thread like that, just around my two fingers, and then I flip it over, stick my thumb through. So, you know, grab a hold of this one here and pull through. I'll show you that again. And I know most people watching this know how to do slip knots, but, you know, you never know. So again, like that, you know, just around those two fingers, flip my hand over, stick my thumb through, grab the short tail, and pull. I'm getting it tied on the hook. And then with the, if you put it to a holder in front of the yarn, You just go through the ponytail holder, if you can see that, grab the yarn, bring it back through, and pull through. Now we'll go over that again. So you're taking the hook through the ponytail holder Grab a hold of the yarn, pull it back through, and go through. It's just like if you were doing a magic loop. Now, when you, you know, you have the gap there and you're moving the yarn together, you don't want to make the loops of yarn around the ponytail holder. You don't want to stretch the ponytail holder out to where it stays stretched out constantly. So this will be a little bit loose so that you'll see on the ponytail itself when I'm done, there are a little bit of gaps, and that's fine because when they're using it, those aren't going to be seen. But if you pull it, if you keep the ponytail super tight and stretched out the whole way, then the ponytail holder just doesn't last as long. Because the scrunchie is only as good as the elastic that it's around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around the whole um, ponytail holder and just doing single crochet the whole way around. And I know that this is an awkward angle and it's not showing you very well.
And I do, you know, push it together, but I make sure not to stretch out the band while I'm doing it. So I'm going to pause for a moment and I will catch up with you um, once I've finished the first round of single crochet. Okay, so we're back here. We have completed the loop around, you know, the circuit all the way around. It's not, you know, 100% solid coverage. You know, you're going to have a little gaps here and there because I don't want to stretch it super thin to get the, to, uh, while I'm trying to move it down. And I know, uh, because I don't want the ponytail stretched out constantly. And I know that once you're, you've got the scrunchie in, you're not going to notice those itty bitty gaps. So let me get one more. Oops. I don't want to do a double there. Get caught on something. Hang on. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to slip stitch my round closed. And sometimes I have a hard time getting it to go in this way, although it's going to make a liar of me now. I've been known to go in hookwise and flip it through, especially if if it just gives me trouble, it's easier than fighting with it. But just slip stitch there to where you have the, the loop finished. And then chain two. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to go through. And I'm going to start with that itty bitty gap right there. And just put in a half double in that first one. So you've got basically two right there. And then all the way around, I'm going to do two half doubles in each stitch because this making it you know when you're going up and doing the half doubles or doing extra stitches is what's eventually going to give it that curly look Okay, and I'm just working my way around, doing two half double stitches in each stitch. So we're basically, we're doubling the number of stitches from what we did originally. So, okay. and I will check back in with you when I am done with this round. Okay, and now we're back here. We finished the circuit of the two half doubles in each stitch. And so again, I'm just going to slip stitch it at the round closed. Now, if you wanted a smaller ponytail, say like maybe for, um, you know, if if you like that style better, you know, you could you could um, end it here and just weave the ends in, and have a smaller ponytail. When my hair was long, I used to use ones like this size quite a bit. Um, but if you want, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep going to make the bigger ones like this for right now. So what I'm going to do from here is we, we've done our row of singles. We've done a row. We've done a row of our single singles, a row of um double half or two half doubles and now we're going to do our row of trip or three um three ha or three doubles in each stitch so i'm going to chain three and then this very first 
stitch right here. I want to put two half doubles or two four two doubles in it, not half doubles. And then from here we're doing three doubles in each stitch. And they can be, you know, fairly, you know, a little loose. And that just makes it a little bit, um, that would just make the ruffle a little bit longer, a little bit poofier. So I am going to work my doubles all the way around. And I will check back in with you when I am almost done with this round. Okay, so here I am. I've got my last stitch that I've got to do the three in. As I drop the stitch here. One. Two. Three. And then... Finish it off with a slip stitch just to close it. And if you can see here how much yarn I have left. Oh, so I did that one just perfect. And I've been using these are I got these from eBay. And, you know, they got the, it's hard plastic, but it's not like super hard. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it. And they're not bad. I don't like that, let's see if I can, that tip right there. The hook's not deep enough for me. It feels like I, I dropped the stitch quite a bit with these. And I have another one that the metal part came out. So I had to Gorilla Glue it in. And my inattentive self got it in backwards so now it's doesn't make that much of a difference because honestly the the flat's not that pronounced yeah but i mean for what i paid for them on ebay they're not it's not a bad price so what i'm getting is my fancy little um yarn needles so I did get these from eBay, and I really like these. So, I am going to trim a piece of this yarn off, just to make it, because that end is shredding. Okay. So I know that whenever I am closing these up, to me, if I go straight down, I'm always concerned that you're going to get, and I don't know if you can see this on camera, where it, to me, it just, it seems like it wants to separate a little bit. So I will just take my needle and go through the back of the loop next to it. And then pull through. And it just kind of cinches it. It doesn't make it like pull it or anything. It just keeps it from gaping. And then I just weave down through the stitches. Until I get down to the elastic band. Is that caught on? Ha. And then I just run it up through the, the initial stitches. I'll just run it um, through a few of those and I can't think and talk at the same time, apparently. I'll just run it through a couple of these just to weed the ends in so that when it's stretched out, when you're putting it, your hair in it, 
it doesn't, the weaved in end doesn't come undone. And now normally I would have weaved this in, the beginning stitch in, or I mean the beginning tail in, as I was doing the row of half doubles. But for some reason lately, I keep forgetting to weave that in as I go. So I just have to come back at the end and shred my yarn as I'm trying to thread it. There we go. And then just take these and just weave these in. Now, since I forgot to do it on the half row of half doubles, I'll just weave it in the loops on the row, the single crochet uh, row, the initial row. Now, I'll just get a couple and then trim that. I love my yarn cutting pendant, by the way. And then your scrunchie's done. You're all ready to go be a disco girl. So that was how I make my scrunchies. If there are, you know, if you're interested in seeing what other things that I make, go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I'd appreciate it if you liked this video, if it helped you out. Let me know in the comments down below any other um, things you want to see me do a tutorial on. I am working on a tutorial for a loom knit cowl, um, that, but I haven't worked on that for a while because I've had a couple of custom, you know, commission orders to get done. But if there's anything else you want to see me do, just um, go ahead and leave a comment down below and have a great day.